Filled with optimism, the Jets headed to the 82 June draft and came away with a big defenseman. Cornwall Royal product Jim Kite was proud to be a Jet. With the transfer of the Colorado Rockies to New Jersey, the Jets were forced to the tougher Smythe division. John Ferguson quickly signed two of his veteran wingers, Morris Lukowicz and Willie Lindstrom, to new contracts. Also signing Doug Sotar and Ed Stanowski. Early in the season, the Jets had productive outings against their old WHA rivals, the Edmonton Oilers, and later on against the big bad Boston Bruins. On a special night, they paid tribute to veteran Serge Savard on his 1,000th game in the NHL. Faced with shaky net mining, John Ferguson called up rookie goaltender Brian Hayward, a graduate of Cornell, and he played well. The All-Star break saw Dave Babbage in the lineup, finishing second in the balloting to Doug Wilson. In early March, a major trade saw former WHA standout Willie Lindstrom shipped to the Edmonton Oilers in return for former Brandon Wheat King star Laurie Boschman. And as the playoffs approached, even Crazy George couldn't get the Jets completely in sync. The Jets lost to Edmonton in the first round of the playoffs, but not without a fight. Game two decided by this play, off the post, but ruled a goal for Paul Coffey. Back in Winnipeg, Gretzky and the Oilers take the series three straight on their way to a Stanley Cup. The Jets at least encouraged by the play of Brian Hayward, but at season's close lost Serge Savard back to Montreal, leaving Jet fans with many a fond memory. In the 1983 June draft, the Jets went to the table hoping to land a big right winger and couldn't believe their ears when Andrew McBain was still available. Ferguson had traded Dave Christian to the Washington Capitals and used their pick to take Bobby Dulles. Early in the season, though, the Jets found themselves on the wrong end of the scoreboard. Dale Howarchuk was in a rut. Coach Tom Watt was relieved of his duties, and Ferguson himself took over behind the bench. Fergie's choice as new coach turned out to be the former Jet captain, Barry Long, who himself sought the services of ex-Jet Rick Bonus as assistant coach. The move started paying dividends as the Jets escaped the basement with a pair of big wins over Los Angeles, then lost the services of Lori Boschman with a shoulder injury in a big game against the Islanders. Former number one draft pick Jimmy Mann was dealt to the Quebec Nordique, and the Jets geared for the playoffs by signing Mark Barron, fresh from his stint at the Sarajevo Olympics as goaltender for Team USA. A major deal saw the Jets land former Norris Trophy winner Randy Carlisle, soon to be considered the Jets' Minister of Defense. The playoffs that year featured another matchup with the powerful Edmonton Oilers, and again the series went four straight. The Oilers again won the Stanley Cup. Season's end, Ferguson immediately started wheeling and dealing. Lucien Deblois, the captain, was sent to Montreal for rugged winger Perry Turnbull. Doug Sotart was sent to Montreal for goaltender Mark Holden. And Tim Young went to Philadelphia in exchange for future considerations. Thomas Steen earned rave reviews for his play with Team Sweden in the Canada Cup. And Brian Mullen also had a great start after his series with Team USA. Dale Howarchuk emerged as a confident captain of this hockey team, and Laurie Boschman rebounded from his serious shoulder injury. In goal, the Jets were encouraged by the early season performances of both Brian Hayward and of Mark Barron, both providing quality net mining. The Jets had their greatest NHL season, 43 wins and 96 points, moving all the way up to fourth overall in the NHL standings, and they were ready for the playoffs and the Calgary Flames. In Winnipeg, the Jets won two straight, but disaster struck in game three. They lost not only the game, but the services of their outstanding scorer, Dale Howarchuk, with a serious rib injury. Still, they won game four and took the series. Against Edmonton, they gave it their all. But without their superstar, they were no match for the Oilers and Gretzky, who somehow seemed to know it would have been different with Howarchuk back. It had been an outstanding season for the Jet captain. 53 goals, 130 points, and runner-up to Gretzky in the Hart Trophy balloting as league's outstanding player. Howarchuk led a three-Jet contingent to the annual All-Star game, setting up a goal on this play. Joining him there were winger Paul McLean, who had his best season as a Jet, and defenseman Randy Carlisle, who many considered the league's comeback player. Six Jets hit the 30-goal plateau that season, tying an NHL record. Howarchuk with 53, McLean 41, Boschman 32, Mullen with 32, Thomas Steen with 30, and Doug Smale finally nailing it with 31 goals. Barry Long was runner-up as coach of the year, and the Jet fans were ecstatic. The 1985-86 season started out well. Ferguson securing the future by signing Dale Howarchuk to a new long-term contract. 
In the June draft, he selected right winger Ryan Stewart from Kamloops and returned him to junior. Goaltender Dan Bouchard was acquired from the Quebec Nordique for security. Dave Babbage traded to Hartford for rugged winger Ray Neufeld. Robert Picard dealt to Quebec for another defenseman, Mario Merois. Those deals seem to shake the lethargy from the Jets as they responded with some impressive outings. McLean and Howardchuck starring against Washington. Laurie Boschman returned to his top form. And his former Brandon teammate, Billy Derlego, arrived in a deal with the Boston Bruins. Late in the season, Bent Lundholm also returned from Sweden. But the bottom seemed to fall out when Paul McLean was injured. Pulled stomach muscles, wouldn't heal till season's end. But Big Mac kept plugging away. Eventually, Fergie fired long and went back behind the bench himself, prompting immediate results. On home ice, the Jets went out and gave an inspired performance against the New York Rangers, beating them to climb closer to a playoff berth. And a win over the high-flying Pittsburgh Penguins and Mario Lemieux took them even closer. Just before the playoffs, Ferguson signed big Brad Berry from North Dakota. And a final tune-up saw a big win over the eventual Stanley Cup champion Canadians. In the playoffs, though, the Jets drew a blank, losing two games in the Saddle Dome before heading home. An inspired performance from goaltender Daniel Bertium ended the season in defeat, but with optimism. Everybody optimistic for their 15th year anniversary. If the Jets ever needed a boost heading into their 15th season, it was provided in early June at the annual NHL meetings in Montreal, when general manager John Ferguson surprised the hockey world by signing Dan Maloney as the new Jet coach. Maloney had been successful behind the Leafs bench, but he wasn't appreciated, it seemed, by Harold Ballard. Quickly responding to Maloney's system in training camp was Finnish rookie Hanu Jarvanpa. The rugged winger scored four goals in his first game in a Jet jersey, a preseason win over Minnesota. When training camp broke, the goaltending positions had been won by Pokey Reddick and veteran Steve Penny acquired in the offseason for Brian Hayward. The Jets officially started the season against Buffalo and honored the founder of the Jets, Ben Hatskin. Late in the game, Laurie Boschman scores from a scramble, starting the season off for the Jets with a 3-2 victory. Three nights later, the hated Edmonton Oilers came to town. Dale Howarchuk scoring on a rebound to tie the game. Late in the game, Dave Ellett's shot is tipped in by Jim Nill as the Jets prove that they can beat the Oilers. In fact, it seemed like they could beat everyone in the Smite division early in the season. Revenge was on their minds as Doug Smale and Paul McLean scored goals on Reggie Lemelin in a 5-2 Jet victory over Calgary. Rookie Daniel Bertium was called up from Sherbrooke, and Pokey and the Bandit became a team. Early in November, a blizzard didn't prevent some diehard fans from coming on to cheer the Jets. The Jets got a goal from... Dave Ellett from the blue line to beat New Jersey's Carl Friesen. Then, soon to depart, Billy Derlego scored to put the Jets ahead. They win this one by a score of 8-1. to one. With plays like this one in Los Angeles, you'd think the Jets would have had trouble on the road. But that wasn't the case. In fact, early in the season, they had the league's best record on the road. Paul McLean scoring twice in a win over the Kings. December was hard on the Jets, though. In fact, it looked like Dan Maloney's team would never win a game. Then, finally, two days before Christmas, against the red-hot Edmonton Oilers, the jinx was broken. Pokey Reddick was outstanding. Gilles Lamel, acquired from Buffalo, tied the game at one all. And late in the game, Dale Howarchuk puts one in from the doorstep. The Jets celebrate Christmas early with a 2-1 win in Edmonton. The Jets get their act together in the new year and finish the regular season with 40 wins and 88 points. Third in the Smythe Division and sixth overall in the NHL. Here are some of the reasons why. Doug Smale scored 25 goals and finished the season with 43 points. Dale Howardchuk again reached the 100-point plateau. 47 goals and 53 assists. Gilles Amell scored 27 goals and added 21 assists, proving John Ferguson made a good trade. 